33-year-old Robert Ryla appeared in Ishpeming District Court earlier today for a preliminary hearing after pleading not guilty at his arraignment two weeks ago. During the proceedings, the victim, who has a daughter with Ryla, went into graphic detail about their storied past. She claims that after Ryla found out she was pregnant, she kept getting threats. What type of threats? You wanted me and my baby to die. You wanted to harm me. You wanted me to harm me. You said if I even tried to file for child support, he was going to kill himself. So I just felt more obligated to say that. Her testimony also outlined what had transpired in the days leading up to the incident, which took place at her parents' home where she allegedly lives and he only stays from time to time because he has a place of his own. She says two days before the standoff, she asked him to help her with housework, but he kept leaving to get drunk with his friends. While he was reportedly in Ontonagon, she asked him not to come back, saying, I can't do this. She claims he texted her back, saying, I'll be at the house with a gun in 30 minutes. He threatened to come there with a gun and kill you. You said something about him making a comment about doing something to somebody's. He told me you would keep me alive long enough to enjoy it. She says he came by later that day and an altercation ensued, but after the cops were called, he left. The next day, she packed up his stuff and told him to let her know if he wanted to come and get it. Then on Monday, she says she was lying down with her daughter in her bed when she heard the dog start barking. She claims she got up to see why and saw him standing in the kitchen. After she allegedly asked him to leave several times and attempted to escort him out the door by his elbow, he reportedly said, I'm taking this as a way of hurting me. Then she claims he went toward the room their daughter was sleeping in, and when she attempted to stop him, things reportedly escalated. He started raising his arm to hit me, and I turned my head and kept hitting me in the back of the head several times. And then he started kicking me in the back and in the sides. She claims she looked around and saw that there was a big streak of blood on the couch. She didn't know who it was from at first, but then he reportedly got up to clean his hand, which had allegedly been cut from punching her. Then she claims she grabbed her daughter from the room and ran out the front door with her before locking herself in his truck and calling her sister for help. Her sister called the cops shortly after, and the standoff began. The defense brought into question her conduct in past relationships and the residential status of Ryla. They claim he lived with her at the residence in question and therefore should not be subject to first-degree home invasion charges. Judge Roger Kangas considered all of the material presented and opted to bind the case over. I know there's, uh, there's always two sides to a story, and I know that out of preliminary examination, I'm pretty much getting one side of it. But it's not a pretty picture, and I have no inclination to change them on or change the deferred jail time right now. If there's some placement somewhere else, but I think there's been way too much alcohol poured on the open flame. There's been some conduct here. Ryla now heads to Circuit Court in Marquette on May 9th for his arraignment.